Safety! Coach Aris! Good evening! Good evening po sa inyo lahat dito sa Football Life. So, uh, ang guest po natin ngayong gabi ay eh, uh, kilalang kilala. No? Finally, we were able to invite him over. No? Kasi yung last time, hindi po siya natuloy kasi merong uh, prop So, ngayon at least na reschedule and we are now live, no? He is now waiting for us to all the way from Germany. Okay, I, our guest for tonight is uh, Stefan Schrock, uh, the Ascals captain and United City FC captain. So, ipapakwento natin sa kanya yung mga challenges niya at saka yung mga victories niya. Tapos yung, ano, yung mga pinagkakabala niya recently, no? Siyempre, ito si Stefan Schrock uh, also was the uh, award winner doon sa recently uh, concluded Philippines Football League 2020, no? yung bubble setup. Alright, so mamaya ipakwento natin, partner. no? Uh, again, we would like to thank our partner, Decathlon Alabang, for always uh, supporting Football Life and Nemesis Football Academy. So, um, yung mga... Uh, naka, nanonood po ngayon, just share this video so maraming makakapanood na guest natin, which is our Askas Captain Stefan Schrock. You know? Okay, so excited ako, partner. Makikita natin siya ulit kasi last time he took the C license. No? So mamaya, we will we will ask him. Alright, so papasukin na natin. Huwag nang patagalin. Yes. Nag-share ka na ba? Yes, partner. Ikaw, nag-share ka na ba? Parang hindi ma-share eh. Pwede ma-share yan. Good evening, John Punsalan. Good evening, Aloha. How's uh, Unique? Hope she's uh, fine. Hi, hello, Mark Diano. Good evening. Coach, Stefan, how are you? Uy, hello coach. Hello oh. coach. Stefan, how are you? Rocky. I'm fine, how are you? Rocky, how are you there? <laughs> very good, very, very good. It's cold over here in Germany. Oh. Yeah. It's obvious with your bonnet. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, can't believe. <laughs> how many degrees now? Negative what? Yeah, negative one. I don't know. Feels oh. like negative 20 when you're coming from Manila. <laughs> <laughs> Very hot here. That's why when there is okay. How about Coach Aris? Maybe you'll be easily adapted, no? Because he's from Baguio, Coach Aris. Uh, okay. Here, it's it's not that uh, cold if we compare it uh, with Germany. Uh, I've been to Germany, but it's uh, September, August, September. What's the weather there? It's not too cold. It's okay. Ger the, that's the summertime in Germany. Yeah, I even brought with me a very thick jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it's really cold. Here in Baguio, it's uh, it's the coldest part. Have you been here in Baguio, up north? Uh, I think so. I've been many places. I'm not so sure. Yeah, this oh, is the, this anyway. is the tourist spot that uh, where always uh, foreigners travel. Also, this is the highest one of the highest part. Uh, in the north, yeah. But I heard it can get go down to 20 degrees there too, right? Yes, yes, yes. So th uh, they had this place, partner, the bus, uh, uh, Atok. They have that place. Uh, they reach, uh, I think, negative, uh, I think, 14 degrees. Frozen partner. with the uh, frozen Four vegetables. Yeah. So I, I think around 14, 16, that somewhat like that. Uh, that's that's so cold for me already. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you there? Uh, how, how how long have you been in Germany when you finish uh, the PFL? Uh, right after the coaching course, I was able to get a flight back to Germany some roughly four weeks now. Mm -hmm. I had to do quarantine first and uh, now I'm enjoying enjoying another lockdown. Another <laughs> lockdown? <laughs> Why? What yes, happened? Yes, Germany is another Why? What happened? Uh, cases here are going through the roof. It's like uh, when I arrived, it was like light lockdown already. That means restaurants were closed and uh, everything what makes fun like cinema malls and all that. 
So cases went up still from 20 to 30,000 a day. So even in Germany now, the capacity for hospitals, doctors and everyone is uh, full. So we, we did another lockdown now until first, until January 10, but it's look, it looks like it will take longer than that. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's really, but yeah. uh, I've just seen a friend in the Guam, I think. They have already injected vaccine by Pfizer. So maybe you'll uh, be, yeah. you'll be the next country next because of uh, you're the first you're a first world country, no? I think Philippines. I don't know yeah. when. <laughs> face okay. shield and face mask for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the safest yeah. thing we have to do. Yeah. So yes, before absolutely. we start, uh, truck, no? Uh, maybe you have uh, your friends, your family over. You wanted to greet, just to do a shout out uh, for all the viewers here in Football Life. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I hope everyone who's joining, enjoying the episode and uh, my fans, family, my uh, titas and titos, and uh, I think my mother will review it later. So <laughs> I shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to mommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. No, That's why we, I messaged you. We were talking with Coach Iris because our team for December is also family. But uh, you told me that your mom is working. So anyways, we will say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she wanted to join, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately she, she has to work. And um, as you know, with the time difference, it's a little bit difficult to find yeah. find the right spot for her. But you have me. Yeah, That's the best of my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. We were just We were just excited because our, our plan this uh, December is to feature... Uh, not only football, but uh, family, family concerns. So since your mom is very helpful, well, especially by bringing you, encouraging you to come here in the Philippines. That's why we ask, what if we include the mommy, the mom of Shrek to our interview, our football life? But then anyway, you're here and uh, she's busy. Yes. Uh, from from what she, province is your mom? She's born in North Cotabato, in Mindanao, but oh, okay. she grew up in Bajan, in the Cebu area. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Do you know how to speak the language? No. <laughs> <laughs> Make it short, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, my mom used to teach okay. me uh, yeah. Zaya, but I lost it all when uh, eventually the teachers in school, they thought um, I cannot speak German. Uh, and then my mom got scared and just teach me German. But eventually later she found out it's just that I don't want to listen. <laughs> I would understand everything. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> yeah, very smart. Anyways. Uh, are, you, are you at home? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm at home work right from... In Germany, in uh, from where in the are south. you? South. Yeah. Oh, okay. Near Frankfurt. Near Frankfurt. Near Frankfurt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we we did our course. Family life. Oh, the love <laughs> so life. You might, is, you might not think, enough than I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You might think that oh, this is anyway. This is a usual uh, uh, podcast, or they'll be asking about my uh, football uh, plans, etc. But in here, we are trying to really get to know our guests. It's have far, you seen? 
Have you seen some of our uh, interviews? Shows, interviews with Maranyon, for example. Have you seen that? Uh, partial, partial. I saw some from BMW. BMW is hard to yeah. listen, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually... was actually having a meeting that time. Though we asked him to uh, just a couple of you know, and then he was sharing that uh, about his uh, girlfriend soon. Yeah, to have a baby. Yeah. Soon to be dead. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Our initial plan is to have a 90 minute uh, interview. It's like a one game, huh? And yeah. then. If ever we'll have an extension, right? It's it's similar with football. If we have, a, let's say, a nil nil score, we'll have an extension. Huh? Like a 15-15. No, that, that won't happen with me. <laughs> Because you'll be scoring ahead, right? <laughs> uh, exactly. Okay, so so Shraki, I think uh, since you're you're the best top player of uh, the Ascals right now and our leader, our team captain. It's good to really get to know you better by telling us how how did you start uh, to play football. Although we know in Germany, it's everybody should play football. But uh, how did your mom encourage you or were you, how did you start kicking uh, football when you were young? Now, when I was younger, the the boys in the backyard would play football always. So I joined them just for for a afternoon activity after school. Um, but my first sport was boxing. Actually, my dad was a professional boxer, so I mm -hmm. joined his trainings. I joined his runs, uh, the shadow boxing and all that. I wanted to be like him a little bit, and mm. uh, later on. Uh, in school, there was uh, some issues with with my yeah, let's say with my classmates. Whenever there is an argument, I would just punch someone, and then my mom decided to <laughs> to take me out of boxing <laughs> for my own good and for my friends' good. And um, so I joined football at around a football club at around six six years old when my neighbor asked me to join. The training sessions and uh, I loved it. I loved it from the beginning, and so I went through through the youth stages, you know, at, uh, under eight, under nine, and all that. And it became clear that I'm not so bad compared to the others. And then I joined several um, provinces selections and uh, eventually got signed by a second league club, a second Bundesliga club in the youth academy. I was at 14, so I moved out, uh, moved to another town, and then was lucky enough to become the youngest professional for the club ever. How old that? So How old by then? How you were then? Just 18 and a month, maybe 18 and uh, six weeks. I was very fortunate because back then it was not uh, common that youth players join the professional team. You have to go first. Uh, earn your stripes at the second team, which was, uh, it's called the under 23, uh, commonly known. And I, I overjumped that. I overjumped several youth levels anyways. When I was 16, I joined the under 19. And uh, so it was just normal for me uh, to join the professionals at a very early age. Well, I was, was happy. It was a good, very, very good feeling. A very proud moment for my mom, for my family. And Yeah, now now I'm here. Uh, during your during your younger younger stage of playing, because uh, in Germany we know that uh, the competition is really high, and uh, the number of players are uh, plenty, quite a lot. So how how would you how was the selection process? Uh, was there a scout? Who identified you? Oh, this this one. Yeah. Uh, when you were when you were playing, or can you remember any moment where in a coach identified you, uh, mentioned uh, that oh, 
or, or your or, potential. Or you are you are in academy in academy and then at the same time the manager saw you play like that. Yeah. It's um, there were several stages when I was in uh, my hometown. There is like 15 to 20 football clubs, and mine was one of the. I would say if you put them on a table, they were at the bottom. And uh, the first mm. team, it comes on the first team. If the first team is ranked high or does play in a higher league, then of course the academies are very good and uh, the training and everything around it, it uh, gets close to professional. But I played in a very, very small club with the first team was uh, maybe in an 11th division, 12th division, more on Sunday football, I would say. And um, I got selected at the tournament. Uh, I think I won the best player or the top scorer. I'm not so sure anymore. And I was asked to join the regional uh, best 18. And then from there on form the best province players. So I was joining several camps with 100 to 120 kids. Like you get a number on your chest stick. And then uh, coaches will watch you play or watch you doing the drills and everything. And uh, from there on, I joined the best 20 in my province. And then later on, all the provinces would play, a regional selection would play a tournament over a week against all the other 16 provinces. And from there on, they choose the national team players on the first camp, which is 60 players around about. You join for 10 days and it's like a casting, a big casting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day someone has to go or uh, every other day. And uh, yeah, at first I did not make the first cut. I, I got kicked out at, I don't know, I think the 30 best. 30 best players got kicked out. And later on, a year later, I joined the under 18 national team for Germany. Uh, Jul- so it was quite a lot of work for a parent or for a, for a mom, especially if you're a single mom. It's a it's a tough tough time for her. It was a tough time. But uh, you mentioned that it's a tough time for your mom. But how about you? When you were the one that, that was cut out, what was your was running into your mind during that time? Oh, of course, I was disappointed. But um, ever since, I have a very very big ego, self-belief. So I thought to myself, I'm better than the others anyway. So I just kept on trying, kept on playing. I went on uh, went on to sign uh, at third at that time when I was 14. And then I extended my contract pretty soon at uh, 15. I first signed a four years contract and extended it another additional two years. So I did well there in the youth Bundesliga. Um, like I said, I overjumped the the youth levels I probably only played two three months at my age level and then got selected to the uh, higher or the older ones and then from there on it was very simple for me to to find my path and uh, get to the get to the national team my national team was was amazing you know if you if you look at the uh, current national team or the national team won at the world cup I think that's six players I've played with from the starting 11 in the in the youth level of Germany. Mm-hmm. So in that time, Germany got uh, lost or got kicked out more or less in the group stage of the European Championship, which is an absolute no-go. So they overrode uh, the whole youth system. And it started with the born 86. So I'm born 86. I was lucky to, to get a very, very good education and um, and uh, yeah not not just football wise also for for life yeah okay partner before we proceed again for the other questions maybe we can already uh, share to Shrak we have a game here no partner the the coaching eye yeah. so uh, <laughs> yeah the coaching eye is uh, <laughs> somewhat a person that uh, somewhat with the resemblance to you uh, look alike um, the same face or same figure? Kamukha. Kamukha. Ilang Kasinggaling. Kamukha Similar way of playing. Yeah. <laughs> Similar uh, style. Just so we, just so we will be having a, a fun while doing this uh, interview. 
we we introduced this game for you to think uh, who's that uh, look alike of mine huh? so okay. coach mike and me chose uh, one one uh, one for each one person yeah each then the viewers can guess also then they can help you out if they they were if they will be able to guess they will be given a discount at uh, Decathlon Alabama. Uh, it's a sports uh, sports store, store yeah. for football and other other uh, football equipment. So, Coach Mike, uh, me first. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Shraki. So Yo. your the coaching eye look alike. Well, you're already entering the coaching uh, career while you're still playing. Hey, so you make sure I'm not failing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you will answer this for sure, you will pass your coaching uh, <laughs> coaching badge. So he's a uh, he's, well, king, he's a retired player. Retired player. He played for World Cup. And then he's uh, popular uh, with the jersey number. Ah, not the jersey because it's easy. Uh, she got ah, he, he got married to. Uh, oh, uh, it's easy also. Yeah, it's easy. It's uh, easy. <laughs> he played for England. Okay, so you can answer that later. Ah, huh? so again, he's a uh, football retired football. Uh, superstar. Uh, he played for England, and then can I mention a club, Mike? <laughs> or yeah. yeah, 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 one club. Yeah, he played no, no, no. for the World Cup because uh, it's quite easy. Later, I'll be uh, uh, giving you additional. Huh? so three, three clues first, and then Mike also. Uh, think of your. You give okay. your clues also. I had, the clue here is uh, he is already also retired uh, professional football player. He he resides in Spain. Okay, he played in the he also played in the World Cup and win the World Cup during that time. Okay, and now can I add one partner also? No, no? three only. Okay, Three. later, later, so later. That later on, later, later, uh, later. Shraki can uh, <laughs> uh, give his answer. Yeah. If you will answer, okay. right, I'll just we'll give partner. you uh, no, plus just points. Yeah, I'll just repeat <laughs> partner. Huh? Professional football player, also re uh, still playing right now, huh, Shraki. Still playing. He still played, playing. He played for Spain, national team, and uh, he won the World Cup with Spain. So, okay. uh, yeah. Later we will add with uh, we'll add another clue for Sure. For, okay. Uh, yeah. So that that's just one of our games, huh? We have three games actually because okay. uh, we really wanted you to Enjoy be also. calm, relax, just to share share your life stories, not much on football because everybody knows your career already. Can we also so ask I, about the girlfriend <laughs> partner? Yes, because life? our next topic will be on uh, family. Family, yes. Do you still remember our five fingers? It's our Filipino coaching guide. Technique, tactic. Oh, partner, don't tell. Let's ask him. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. <laughs> oh, Come on. Just, just a we month, are huh? reminding you again. Ah. <laughs> I can check in my notes if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, well, it's, anyway, anyways, we just uh, it's you. it's not a secret. So remember, technique, tactic, physical aspect, yeah. mental, mental and, then and decision making. making. Actually, oh, coach, Alex, if this was asked in the test, yeah. I'm not so sure if I made it. <laughs> <laughs> so here, it's, it's well, already stated here. No, that's the technique already. So that's okay. the first element that we will discuss for tonight. Although you discussed already technique, how you started to play, how you became one of the top football players in Germany, yeah, and now you are here. But our next topic will be on family. 
Yeah. And we've been seeing your Instagram, Facebook, can you even share? your Facebook page. So, can you introduce your your wife? Your of course I can. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that <laughs> very confident partner. Of course, of course. Yes. Uh, that's my wife Tina. She is um, 34 years old, same as me. We uh, know each other for uh, since we're eight years, eight, nine years Ooh. old. Wow. Yeah. Um, she was my first girlfriend. My, uh, she's my best friend, my partner in, in good and bad. We, this is uh, from our marriage was 2011. If I'm not mistaken, we live, no? <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I cannot oh, uh, make yeah, sure you remember, uh, huh? <laughs> 2011. It was 2011. May 2011. Wow. Um, yeah, together for so long now. And uh, I owe a lot to her, too. Um, she always sacrificed for my career. And um, still up to now, she does. So uh, she's a rock. She's the boss in the house, I have to admit. Wow. And uh, good thing she she holds everything in balance for us because if I I should have then we would be stranded with nothing. Everything will be a disaster. <laughs> oh. yeah, big disaster, big disaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the thing there is uh, it's well managed, yeah. Yeah, she's not on, only the prettier of us; she's also the smarter one. So I'm I'm pretty much rely everything on her. <laughs> so. Is she listening right now or watching the show? She's watching the kid downstairs because uh, since it's lockdown, one kid is here, the other one is with the grandma, and then we have to entertain them the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but if she's going to watch this uh, show, maybe if you have something to uh, say for your uh, wife? Yeah, later she'll be checking on your interview. <laughs> uh, nothing she did not she does not know already i i am um, very grateful to have met her and that she stuck to me stick to me when uh back then i had really nothing uh, my mom uh, depended on social welfare and uh, we grew up for german conditions very poor um she still loved me she uh, she never minded my She's proud of what I am in the football life and everything, but she uh, got to know me or she knew me when when I was uh, just a little broke kid and uh, she still loved me and chose me. And that's, I will never forget uh, all the tough times she went through with, with me and for me. And uh, I'm very grateful to have her. And um, the next 50 years after the career, I will uh, dedicate her dreams over mine. <laughs> because she was wow. she really has to sacrifice a lot for for what I'm doing and what what I want to do and what I love to do and uh, she's doing a great job and um probably I would never have reached half of it when it wasn't for her and she wasn't there for me yeah the, uh, because of that uh, sharing no shraki uh, i just wanted to ask uh, what uh, keeps you both connected even though you're in the philippines Aside from, of course, the internet, but uh, how do you address that? Now, this year was the first time, or this uh, period for the league was the first time we were separated. Usually they come with me wherever I go. Um, she always has to start all over new again. Those who know when they move left and right, countries, cities. Um, It's not easy when you're a mom. It's not easy when you when you're alone. Uh, leave all your friends, your family behind, and the sacrifice I do, she has to carry probably double and triple. And uh, for someone who is not a football player or who is not uh, so much involved in the game, it's pretty tough. And I respect respect her a lot for for uh, what she's doing over the past 18 years for me and. Um, And thank her enough, but she knows it. You know, sometimes I have to sleep still on the couch, but she knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's something that is uh, really good for the ears, you know, because uh, we really wanted a partner who will understand our passion, 
no our love for the game yeah oh well she's not the best uh, well educated football wife you will ever meet i i can tell you that but uh, i like that too um i don't have to come home and explain a game a bad half time or something she just uh, backs me up wherever she can she she's proud of what i'm doing and what i achieved and um like i said if it wasn't for her and it wasn't her support i would have never reached half of the things i reached or i i was able to win and um also as a person she challenged me as a person she made me she loves to call it she made me a man not in a <laughs> in a adult way more on a person um the way she thinks the way she handles uh situations and life is is very inspiring and um there's many times i'm tired of training tired of preparing for a new season on but when i see her she's working uh, literally 24 hours um even at night you know when you have small kids they never sleep they barely barely uh, have no the word weekend so she's uh she's my idol more or less in life she's a tough woman and a very loving mother and loving wife oh yeah uh, that's oh, my, that must be enough plus points for me to <laughs> to skip the christmas yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> i think uh shraki it's it's also one uh one thing that we will consider if we are really playing Uh, for professional football or maybe just uh, coaching or just playing amateur football we need a partner who is really very supportive very just like what you're sharing especially you who's uh, playing at the highest level we really need someone to guide us to be our partner who will uh, also give advice especially if we're on high or low or uh, lost maybe Yeah. They're the yeah. ones who will remind us or pull us out from uh, from the garbage, maybe. Or if we're really up high, if we're too high, they will be the one to pull us down also. Part yeah. of, part of, part so of, can I, you I'm sharing ba? this because Mike is really uh, in part need. Of, part of, can you relate? Ba? Can you relate? <laughs> well, all all the all the football players and coaches yes. can relate. Yeah. So, we so have... it's good that Shraki also yeah. Share, shared. Yeah. Uh, Uh, so congratulations to you for having one and to all the the football coaches because uh, Shrak, we also remembered uh, one of our guests here who shared about the family love life because of football he has to be out most of the time uh, you remember coach Joel Villarino this one of, of course. those He's one of those. Uh... So he got lost. <laughs> he got lost. <laughs> yeah, if you will, if you will try to ask uh, some coaches who are really very passionate, who's always there. Uh, not all. But can partner, have a... <laughs> partner, Coach Joel was very uh, recently was telling us that. Uh, Uh, we have to love our yeah, family. We have to love our family. We have that's to one thing balance that, everything. Yeah, that's one thing that's good about Coach Joel. He, he recognizes his mistake, also to have to give time to, <laughs> to his family. Yeah. Yes. So sure. maybe we can start crying huh? <laughs> uh, for the other football. <laughs> anyway, Shraki, can we also proceed to uh, the challenges? Because I think you have two kids. Two kids or three? Two. My two. wife has three, including me. Two that you know? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you, Micah, you're making... Uh... <laughs> so, Shraki, let's talk about your kids because we've been seeing them with your uh, trainings, with your home uh, activities. So, you please introduce your very cute uh, kids. <laughs> Who's this one? This is the youngest now, currently three years old. So uh, cute, huh? Manilo. What's, yes. What's his yes. name? What's his name? Manilo. Wow. Manilo. Manilo. Huh? Yo, it's like Manila. Manila. It's like Manila. Really hope, yes, my it's... wife really hoped for a girl, and she had Manila in mind already, and uh, <laughs> so it turned out it was another boy for her. And this one is a really, <laughs> really, really naughty one, and he's 
Oh, he's yeah. a very and, funny and playful guy. Uh, uh, yeah. He's more comes more after me, I would say. <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough not to crack. Crazy, ah, huh? the craziness. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. a good thing, no? <laughs> If it's like that. And this, and this he's one. eight years old. His name is Tias, and he oh. is he's absolutely amazing. Um, this um, he's an artist. Best kid I've ever seen in my life. Uh, He's so charming and so um, he has so much love for the world and uh, very very proud to have him. He's not a sporty one. He is he doesn't enjoy sports at all. Uh, also not football. Not watching me. Not not really interested in what I'm doing. But <laughs> <laughs> he's a very very loving kid. I love him so much and I love both of them. I enjoy time at home. It's the uh, It's the best time. I'm grateful sometimes for the pandemic that I can catch up with, with the kids and uh, have them daily around me. At times it's tough, of course, but um, most of the time I really enjoy it and I'm very grateful to have the both of them. Shraki, uh, since you mentioned your your oldest uh, kid is isn't into sports, so as a father, are you a type of person who pushes your kid or you just let them be their, be themselves? Yeah, the way I tried, <laughs> I tried to push him. <laughs> I forced him to join a, a football academy in Manila, and uh, but it is just it's just not for him. We tried several sports, and uh, I accept that he can. May with, with some it clicks earlier, with some it clicks later, and I'm just happy that he's a a good student, a very very good good kid, and he his behavior is really above average. And um, very, very happy to have him. And uh, if he doesn't like sports, then if I die, he will not get one of my houses or properties. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the condition, huh? That's already that's already a pressure, huh? Pressure. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. I'm just joking. We can see some. Some coaches, some football players, right? Who But, are really enforcing, like Coach Mike, maybe. Are uh, you? I'm teaching my pushing daughter. your daughter yes, to. I'm teaching my daughter, but uh, I also involve her to engage to other sports as well. She was doing oh. ballet, swimming. <laughs> yeah, just let her do what she wants. Yeah. And then later on, she's gonna find out if she's really into the sport, di ba? Yes, maybe, yes. maybe Shraki, your youngest one, maybe she's gonna be involved into football. Let's hope. Let's hope. My last, my last and only hope <laughs> football. She's yeah, gonna... no, don't, don't try to be. <laughs> maybe your grandkids, right? Maybe yeah. Your children, because uh, we do not know. Or maybe, uh, there, or maybe that's our secret. <laughs> or maybe there's gonna be another one coming. <laughs> yeah, well, um, <laughs> my wife, if my <laughs> if my wife gets another additional two arms, then maybe we can get another one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially this uh, pandemic, ah, huh? yeah, you can. <laughs> Everything is possible in pandemic. But Shrek, you know, uh, during this time that you went home, no, of course, uh, before you went to the Philippines because you were in Germany before the bubble. What was coming into your mind? Is your kids telling you, "Oh, daddy, you're gonna leave again"? Yeah, actually, it's it's taking a toll on the kids too because um, I'm I'm having a lot of time if ever I'm not on the road, I'm not on away games. Uh, you know, it you have two hours a day training, and you you the rest of the day you can spend with your kids. You can spend. Um, playing with them, raising them, and uh, just enjoying the time. And uh, for both of them, it was tough when I left. Uh, I found out after three weeks, two weeks, they were tired of me talking to, on the phone. The little one would always ask the same question, why you cannot be here? He always refers to, we have the same last name. You have to be here in the house as well with us. <laughs> uh, really? Uh, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> In in his own way, he tries to tell me that, um, yeah, that we should be together, and uh, I 
like I said, I'm, I'm enjoying the time really a lot with my kids and when it's off season and uh, our pandemic, <laughs> uh, my time is, is for them only. And uh, that's, that's a good part that I can catch up with them. It's also make it tough or hard if I have to leave again. So every, every time I'm, I'm at home or I have to leave uh, now, and especially when you're 34 years old, I'm thinking of, ah, oh, this might be my last season. This might be my last contract. And I rather want to spend time with my kids. But uh, the competitive part of, of myself is still high. And I still think I have a lot to contribute to the game. Mm -hmm. And my wife is always very uh, understanding and uh, she's pushy also. Uh, uh, three years ago, not many people know that. Three years ago, I wanted to stop playing football already. Um, I, made, I made a good living with it. And uh, it's time to... To, uh, for me, it was time to spend time with my family. Yeah, and say, telling me, ah, oh, you're not, you're not so bad. You're still good. Just, just keep playing until, until you can't no more. I'm handling the kids, and she does very well with them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shrak, Shraki, you made you made mention of your, of your age. <laughs> we all yeah. know that uh, if you reach thirty, that's that's the start of uh, Prime, uh, our second. <laughs> Second so wave, we try wave. to think of our yeah same is true with COVID second wave is it second wave <laughs> yeah anyway you you can still play and I think you're really strong but then I think you have plans right you're thinking of uh, uh, making a career into coaching or yeah. you you have other plans like some players go into business inter entrepreneur. They go. Uh, what else? <laughs> um, What's your plan, Shraki? Or maybe for so maybe three team. years from now, maybe four years from now, we do not know. Forming another team, no, Shraki. Maybe Turning in a beard modeling. I'm no, modeling. Beard. You're modeling. Can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can can yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most certainly, um, I love the game. I really, really love the game. I love the mother country and. Uh, I love the the circumstances in the Philippines. I love the challenge, and I love the the idea of becoming a coach one day. I just joined uh, recently, as you guys know, since you, Mike, Coach Mike, were my mentor in the in the C license and the AFCC license, and um, Jarius was also there. And um, for me, coaching is is one option to stay in the game, to be connected with football, because I football is not for me, not just for uh, a day or a, a season or a contract or something. Football gave me everything in life. And uh, I'm, I love the game. I love the game dearly. There's not a day where where I don't think of football. I want to watch football. I want to get information and input about football. So I want to stay in the game. Coaching is an option. And if I do it, I go... I'm not reaching for... Just become maybe a PFL coach or not just just a pfl coach i want to coach a national team i want to be the best coach if ever i i choose to be a coach and um you will see me more often in the licensing i guess in the next years um i just want to ask regarding this one no shaki because you entered into the pffc license yeah yes. um considering of the situation that you are already or you are still playing for the professional club, which is the United City. Um, and then you also ventured already while playing and also coaching. Like you're on, uh, you're on a dual role. So how did you manage that then? What are the challenges as well? Being a coach and at the same time, 
play. Um, this year, this year I was uh, signed in as also as a, a assistant coach. Um, I worked out the coaching session or the the training sessions with um, Coach Frank, as you know. Uh, very very uh, interesting the way he has his views and his input. I'm very grateful that he was on my side for this one. And uh, there's it's tough, of course. You you have to overlook everything, and then especially when it's so such a tight schedule as we had with the PFL season, with the bubble, with everything was basically new. The training sessions were only with five players, a group separate from each other. So um, you cannot overlook everything. You have to manage and uh, uh, let go of things uh, during a normal uh, training season. But um, I don't see so much of problems. I, I rather focus on the opportunities and uh, for me, it was great to have this input, great to make this experience uh, for United City. I am very grateful that they uh, gave me so much responsibility. Like you said, I'm just a player and it's not a normal thing in a professional football career that you are able to uh, coach, um, play and be the captain at the same time. That's not a normal thing, but I'm not a normal player, so I don't see the challenge. I embrace <laughs> the opportunity. So it's 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 a normal thing, no? I mean, uh, uh, the way you handle your players because you've been uh, with the uh, United City, or you may call it uh, Ceres also, yeah, and uh, that you've been there for a long time. Um, it seems that the players uh, easily adapted uh, uh, into your. Uh, Maybe your coaching role, or, or your your mandate, or I mean, uh, how you handle the training. Uh, is it that you're the one handling the training, or you just involved in the uh, the planning stage with with Coach Frank? Can you share that? Pretty much, pretty much. I was uh, was in, involved in the planning stage, how a session and what we're gonna do um, on the circle, the micro circle. You know, when we have the three games in a week, how we're going to handle this and that, the recovery, the, uh, the right input on, on the games for the substitutes and all that, all of that, I was involved in that. Um, Coach Frank uh, was the one handling on pitch everything with uh, the explanations on, on different exercising and drills and games and uh, the rule sets and everything. He did a fantastic job. I'm very happy that he was the one joining me and uh, I hope I, I have the opportunity to work with him uh, if ever I extend my contract at United for for another season because he's a very crafty coach, a nice person, and and uh, a big mentor, I would say. He's a very, very full package of uh, of a coach, and uh, he, he understands the game very well. And we see most of the time we were 100% agreeing on, on what to do and how to handle the opponents. You were mentioning that uh, maybe you will resign. So, uh, is there anything that's coming into your mind recently, or an or an offer outside? Is that what there's you're trying? The, uh, every year, every year there is offers from outside, yeah. and every year there's the thoughts of uh, probably retiring or not, or uh, what to do next. Um, I take it step by step. For now, it's only Christmas and. Uh, Christmas time belongs to my family and after that I I'll plot with my wife on what to do next. Boom. That's yeah. a good answer, huh? But before we continue, <laughs> similar with the game, it's half time. So we'll be having a half time quick talk game. So Coach pa Mike, partner, the game is uh partner, but before you show that uh, game, no? I'm very, very impressed of Shraki, how he uh, uh, answered that last part, huh? the one uh, before this game. We have to follow his footsteps, Mike, yeah, yeah. because he's uh, family-centered huh? <laughs> and uh, he's really a good example. Huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the you're, game. You're always uh, Shraki, huh? <laughs> Have you been given a straight red card during your career? How, yeah. Do, do you remember? Or it's it's normal for you to be given a red card, yellow card? Mm, 
no, it's not normal. But <laughs> I got sent off at my first Bundesliga game. First? <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I will remember that forever. <laughs> uh, why? What happened there? What happened? Uh, it was a 50-50 challenge and um, maybe, maybe my foot was a little bit high. And uh, because of the dynamic of the play, I got sent off and uh, was around 70 minutes late. So we lost the game because of me. Oh. So I will never forget that. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a lesson. <laughs> lesson learned, huh? Yes, yes. Anyway, the game, our quick talk game, you just have to answer quickly. Huh? We'll just give okay. you two options. So, for example, the common question, Ronaldo or Messi? So, for sure, you will choose uh, Messi, right? No, Ronaldo. <laughs> no, Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. Just a guess. So, that's that's how we play. If you are answering uh, more than three seconds, we'll give you red card. Red card. Huh? Red card. <laughs> all right, or all right. yellow card, maybe. <laughs> But, partner, we cannot send off or else we don't have interview already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay. okay, the first one. Ron, uh, oh, we're, Ger- done with, we're done with Ronaldo and Messi. He, he answered or <clears throat> Germany or Philippines. Philippines. Okay. Yes. Wow. Uh, Ceres or UCFC. UCFC. Oh, that's three seconds. So it's only yellow card. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. That's why I have to think. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Although you have more memories with the past. Yeah. Anyway, UCFC is the UCFC new is the one. future. Yeah. Is the, <laughs> the present one. You go with the future always. Yeah. How about this one? It's a brand. Adidas or Nike? Nike. Oh. You're. Are you being sponsored by Nike or yeah, you just I'm like... I'm with uh, Nike, so it would be bad if I say Adidas. <laughs> That's <laughs> why. That is why, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but, don't, for... but, don't, but don't forget 8.5, huh? Last time you mentioned. You uh, 8.5, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a 7, I'm a 7. You're 7? Uh, same size, huh? Same size, same uh, size. Uh, same uh, size, uh, same uh, size. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Aris, ah, you put there. <laughs> next license. <laughs> On the next license. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, playing for Ascals or playing for club team? Ascals. Yeah. Oh. Okay, how about this one? Football or family? Oh, yeah. it's five seconds, my friend. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> Is that a guilty? <laughs> You're guilty for focusing with football, but you really wanted to have time with your family, it's right? Already, yeah. It's already 10 yeah. seconds. You cannot kill us. I think similar similar scenarios with the other don't professional players. <laughs> Very you high. can answer both. Huh? Uh, you can say both. Or too. maybe so or. That you... Or. Uh, or. <laughs> Because Mike, uh, Mike chose uh, football. Oh my God. <laughs> you also, you also choose football last time. Uh, huh? <laughs> football or family, oh, you chose football. I'm oh. balancing it. Huh? Oh. So, oh, Charlie, balance, don't, huh? don't imitate uh, Coach Aris. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. Oh. With, uh, let's say, how can we say this? Let's say two years from now, still you wanna coach or you wanna still play? Play. Still play, ah? Huh? Wow. <laughs> How about this one? Uh, maybe in the part of a part of your career, national coach or club? National. National coach. Yes. So this is ano uh, recorded this is live we cannot edit this anymore so we All can our review, Filipino we can, uh, we can review this one in the future if it, 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 if it will happen it's in football life yeah. it will happen let's say yes, yes, yeah. it will happen what if uh, the German Federation and Philippine Football Federation offered you to coach Germany 
or Philippine football team? Who will you choose? Which would you choose? You choose the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, this uh, one. Being a model, modeling or acting, let's say. They wanted you to do a side modeling. career. Modeling. 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 Yeah, acting looks like a lot of work. <laughs> Too much work for me. How about, okay, this one. Pants or shorts? Shorts. Uh, <laughs> I'm always on shorts. Photo? Beach? If it's on Christmas. <laughs> oh my, go. Polo or jersey? Jersey. You know it. You had to you had to ask me five times to wear a polo or a polo shirt. <laughs> Coaching license. That's not for How me. How about, I know, cap? Cap or bonnet? Bone. Forehead. Bone. <laughs> What about it? <laughs> okay. All right. Some of our questions will be difficult, so we don't want you to get a red card. Anyway, later we'll be having another game. Huh? It's uh, quite similar, but uh, we'll be showing you photos. So I think I'll give a follow-up question regarding you helping out in uh, your bubble training. Because even Sir Eric, we we had uh, Sir Eric, your uh, club uh, owner, uh, yeah. shared with us here in Football Life. Uh, she really, uh, he really mentioned that Shraki really helped our club by sharing his experience back in Germany. And we even uh, asked him to really prepare or to go back to Germany and... Uh, do his uh, preparation so that when he returns, he will be fit for the UCFC. So he also mentioned that you really had a big part on the physical aspect wherein you gave uh, tips to your team, to your coaching staff on how to handle or deal with the bubble bubble scenario preparation bubble setup. we're in some of the clubs were really too too high in their preparation but then you you your team did only three sessions in a week something like that can you share to our football life coaches and players here anyway you're the champion already yeah what were your secrets then yes <laughs> um in Germany, when I arrived in Germany back back in May, uh, football was allowed to start. Um, so I was uh, able to join the teams, uh, join some teams as a guest player and uh, several clubs and teams I trained with. And they all were struggling with the uh, five players, a group um, setup, which was most of the time until we entered the bubble, the case uh, in preparation for the PFL season. So it gets boring, uh, you know, yourself as coaches, um, the players are unmotivated. And uh, after two weeks, it, it's uh, always always the same uh, circle, the same passing drill, or not the same passing drill, but you know what I mean? It's not a game in the end. It's not, a, it's not fun for them. So we decided uh, to just uh, cut it down to three times a week on the pitch training, so the traveling and all of that to Kamona itself is not so much tiring. Then it's a little bit excitement to get on the ball again for the players. And at the same time, on the other four days, we had three days with individual training, which was running and um, core exercising and uh, just, just to keep um, the fitness alive during these off pitch days. So I was able to reach out to my old friends uh, they are fitness coaches in the Bundesliga and the under-21 national team in Germany. So we had a Zoom call all together and uh, we discussed the setup in the Philippines. We discussed the fitness level, where they could be, where they should be and when they should be there. So they, I was very uh, fortunate to have the contacts of them and they helped me a lot in preparing the team and myself for mm -hmm. For this setup because um, mm. there's this issue seven months no training uh, then 
some of them were able to go in the parking lot or were able to run outside or something like that, but they're not all on the same level. So we worked out a pretty good training program. And as you see, we looked, I think, physically at the sharpest at the best of all the teams in, in the league. And uh, if ever that will be the case for another season, then I will just get on the phone and get on a Zoom call with them and ask them for advice because uh, it's a very, very un, uh, unrealistic uh, preseason for, for a football season. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, experts and uh, the best of the best in Germany could give the input for my team and for, my, for myself. Shraki, it's an advantage having this kind of uh, connections, right? Uh, but considering that uh, there is no available uh, equipments or gadgets that uh, what the Germany, uh, German teams have uh, yeah. that is uh, available in the country. So how do you manage to check where it is that your teammates or your, you, as, you yourself or your teammates are uh, considering of that fitness? And nowadays, uh, I mean, you don't need necessarily tools. Of course, it's better and uh, equipment and all of that. But uh, everyone is, is equipped with an iPhone, with a smartphone. And uh, with that, you can measure a lot already, which is when it comes down to how many kilometers you have to reach um, or uh, how long uh, you run a distance or how quick you have to finish a distance. All of that is... is uh, with a Nike running app, you can pretty much overlook everything. And and with an individual feedback, when when someone said, hey, I'm struggling to, to reach uh, within 14 minutes, a seven kilometer mark or something like that, just because it's hot or it's, uh, uh, if you live in Tagik, there's literally no place where you can run properly, not bumping into a car or, or a, uh, a red light or something like that. So you have to, um, tailor it around every individual where they are and where they're staying at the moment and uh, with the help of the athletic coaches of these uh, big big clubs and big teams uh, we were able to really really find the best training program for each and every one yeah that's good no because it's very evident during the tournament uh Shrakin, how you how your team performed no uh because a lot of players are cramping no, and uh, also injuries as well, because we were thinking already before the start of the tournament that uh, there will be a lot of injuries because considering of the long time of being out on the pitch. Yeah, no, and, we, we have we have anyways in in the team the the work ethic is a very high one. So they, as you saw, there's no no one came back overweight. Uh, or, or stuff like that, which, which can happen really easy during pandemic when you're bored, when you're stuck in your house, it just uh, grab the chips, grab the chocolate, grab whatever, get an extra rice portion or something. But we have a very uh, good work ethic, a very disciplined team and a hungry one. I would say it's not common if you win four trophies in a row and you're still hungry for more. Uh, that's that's not the case in my team, and especially not if you're my teammate, because I will make you pay for it. Wow! Wow! So Shraki, Shraki, speaking of uh, uh, home workout, let's say six months in the pandemic <coughs> lockdown, we've been watching or we've been checking on your workout. So can you share some of your favorite workouts so while you're locked down in uh, in your apartment or yeah. condominium yeah um <laughs> that, that picture here is from uh, i said in uh, bgc in uh, a forbes town so we stayed in the penthouse condominium it's, it's a 53rd floor so i uh, simone rota in the background you can see there's a stationary bike he was able to provide me one and oh. I could order it uh, with him or f via him. And uh, then I um, anyways have always some bands, some weights at home. And so I, at days, three times a week, I would just go down to the parking lot and either run all the parking lots up or use the stairs 
from P3 to the 53rd floor twice. And then that's it for, for keeping my mind and my body fit because it's, it's a tough one. You get deep trained. Uh, I think it's a term for it. And, uh, after, after two days, I get a little bit, let's say unbalanced. Uh, I need the physical exercises. I need to be in shape. I need to know that I did everything for, for my profession from, for football, uh, to justify my big mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, that's, that's a good, it's, it's, uh, it's a good, uh, well, we appreciate your, your honesty. honest, uh, yeah, honesty <laughs> on how you give justice to what you say for, for how you talk to your teammates, how you talk to the media and how you really take good care of your body. And you know what, when we were really trying to yeah. check on your workout, we were inspired. We were inspired yeah. and we really saw the result. So we've seen some of your uh, work photos out. on Instagram and workout. We want so I to... think the result, you have here your abs, right? Yeah. How many abs do you have? Because uh, me and uh, Coach Mike... We have a couple only. <laughs> yeah. So you have one, two, three, four, six. You only have six, huh? So I think Mike... Can you share also your training workout after watching Shraki yeah, it's really during hard. his uh, lockdown session? It's very hard, no? Being motivated. <laughs> How many repetitions? <laughs> Maybe I did 10 so that I can catch up. Oh, see that dumbbell, huh? He bought a dumbbell for <laughs> Shraki so that he will have similar abs. And uh, you show your result. You can check. Oh, see? <laughs> you see that? That's the motivation, huh? That's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight abs already. Wow. <laughs> you see That's that? a nice one, yeah? You, you have good genes, I can tell. Can you see the lines? Uh... But... <laughs> That's amazing. You can see the lines. Is that a shraki ab? Huh? But Mike, be careful. You have to drink water yeah. huh, afterwards. Very important. Yeah. So uh, shraki, even even me, I know when when I tried to follow some of your workout, I tried to carry my control <laughs> controller <laughs> just so I can have uh, shraki abs also. Work and out. then uh, look at my look at my abs. Oi. <laughs> I am heavy, huh? Six pack. <laughs> very complete, huh? That's yeah. very complete. Oh. Wow. Very yes. fine. Wow. I, I need that because when I play, I need food beside me. Because if you're addicted oh. with FIFA, uh, you need uh, food beside you. <laughs> uh, there's, just, it is uh, not complete if there's no food. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yes. you, partner, you hide the beer there. Shraki wants to drink also. <laughs> but to ask where's the red horse, I cannot see the red horse. Yeah, there. No, huh? We have to, we have to. For the diet, hide only the light, right? You only yes, hide, because, huh? you only hide. Uh, we are coaches, so we have to keep them. But I remember in Germany, the beer is really open. <laughs> I think my one month allowance was consumed in uh, one week because of the beer. <laughs> Everywhere you go, every area, they have different beer. Shaki, can you share that uh, experience? Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned the uh, last time that we should be having that uh, conversation. You mentioned to me that, oh, maybe I'm going to be drunk that time because I'm going to be drinking <laughs> lots of beer. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's Saturday. Uh, <laughs> the original scheduled one was would be two two a.m. in Germany, so it's it's uh, off season for two weeks. I always cheat after the season. I uh, give me a full two weeks, so I appreciate the work more than than uh, I do during the, the year. You know, it gets tiring if you have to be fit three hundred forty days a year. And especially me, I'm very uh, strict with my diet, with my, I don't eat chocolates, no sweets, no nothing. And I have two children in the house that barely, or they almost every day have their hands in something inside, which is very, 
very yummy and very um unhealthy <laughs> for me. <laughs> so is there's no there's no moment that uh, you grab one and have a taste of it? There is no if I grab one I finish the pack always. <laughs> so in this week I finish it quick. Always. <laughs> yeah. Um b- before we go to the next game though, no? um I just remembered the uh, we also asked this with coach Frank. Since you are the one in charge of the team, uh, not totally in charge, but you are involved in the planning stage. What was coming into your mind during that last match versus Kaya in the PFF, even though you win the league already? Uh, considering that you played uh, most of your substitute, only leaving only, I think, you, um, Mike, and uh, who's the other one? I think only, Me, Mike, and only three players. That's a good question, Mike. Me. I think you only two only or three. Me only. Yeah. And I then the rest was three. Three, three of you. Three of you, yeah. <laughs> well, look, there is um we had that like Kaya and uh, especially the ADT team, uh, they found it a bit disrespectful that we let play the substitute or the not so called first starting eleven on the last game because uh, the ADT team had still a chance to become second if we beat Kaya. And uh, Kaya wanted the big clash uh, um, on the last game and uh, they wanted to play the best team, best possible team uh, what UFC, UCFC can bring. But um, I think we finished the job early. We, we finished it in style in four games. We, we became champions already. And the team is, let's be honest, the uh, others, were not able to prove their worth to the club, to the team. Um, you maybe not know, but uh, some or all of us only had four, four or five months contract with UCFC. And uh, if you get subbed at five one or four one, what can you show? What can you prove to the owner and to the coaching team and to everyone involved that you're worth uh, being signed there? Yeah. So Kaya is a tough opponent, and uh, I, I asked Coach Frank if he's fine with that to let the substitutes prove their worth to the team, to the club, to the owner. And uh, he was okay with that. We all went through the same stages with eight months of no football or six months were not, not playing football. And some, some of them never played longer than five minutes or 10. And who knows when will be the next season. So we gave them a thank. Yeah. I thank you from the team because it's, yeah, it's yeah. not easy always to sit outside to be sidelined, especially when we have a, we have very good players on the bench, but we have absolutely amazing players in the starting lineup. So to let them play is a thank you and also an opportunity to prove their worth. Simple as that yeah. to the new owner and uh, hopefully because they've been become daddies, they have families, they're breadwinners. Um, to let them uh, show what they can do and give them an opportunity to fight for another contract for the next season because football is their life too and they have to earn they have to provide their families with money yeah and uh, simply therefore we let them play and i think everyone uh, who knows the reason would understand and that there's nothing to do that with disrespecting or yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, not showing integrity towards the league or the other teams yeah the so, moment that we we were discussing that with partner coach Aris, we we saw the intention of uh, of the plan uh because like what you mentioned you said you shared to us that you finished the season with four matches or the four games already so you you've done your part you've done your job you have the title already and then there's nothing to prove anymore and then you just have to give the opportunity also with the other players to showcase their talent. Yeah, I think that's something that they have to do as well because uh, the manager or the owner of the new club will have to see them as well if they are deserving. Exactly. Yeah, the- and for all the other teams, if they want to finish on a better position, there's still there was still time beating us in the other four games if they want to finish second or third or yes, yes, fourth yes. or yeah so uh it's not necess- i understand their concerns but it's more on looking after our own uh, every team is 
uh, equipped with 20 players and just with 11 or 8, no one will go nowhere. So we need us all and we we respect their worth, their work and their, their patience. It's not easy to be sidelined. And uh, that's a thank you from the coaching and from the starting members because every starting member got asked if he's fine with resting out the last game, even though it's Kaya, to make space for a bench player. And everyone agreed to that. So it was a very easy decision. Yeah, I think I, I also support uh, yeah. that decision. <clears throat> Although uh, Coach Frank, when he he mentioned his uh, his intention and plan, he was very apologetic. And he, he was really concerned of uh, making a bad decision. But I, I, well, we told him, no, because you're really concerned with uh, other players who are bench, who are also uh, hungry of playing at least more than five minutes or more just to show everyone. Anyway, you're already the champion and you're the winners already. So give them a chance. There, but uh, Sir yeah. Eric... <laughs> there also one thing though, with Sir Eric, no? Sir Eric also was uh, sharing to us here uh, after your victory, showing the trophy behind, no? He has the trophy behind when we interviewed him. Um, I think uh, he was uh, feeling also that maybe it's a wrong decision. Maybe it's that is it's his own opinion, no? That it was a wrong decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he texted you uh, right before the game. He asked me. Um, what's the reason behind it and uh, <clears throat> he was a little bit uh, worried of course the club is new and uh, we have uh, almost two years no loss in the domestic league and we risk we risk that winning streak with um, with the formation but you know if you put me in charge then uh, don't yeah. question my <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's what, uh, <laughs> you told him that <laughs> Of course, it's it's not you know it's it's not like um, uh, we I don't let my I don't want to get input from the outside or something like that. But every move I make, there is a decision behind it. And I, once I explained it to him, he was fine with that, and he was uh, agreeing to to what I this what I and Coach Frank uh, had decided. And uh, all the players were involved in that decision making. So. Um, yeah. When it comes down to that, I really have blinkers on. I focus just on what we want to do and what we have to do. And I don't let things from the outside infiltrate my decision. Uh, if someone is not happy, I'm not Nutella. I don't have to make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. we can't blame him because yeah. he's the owner and uh, he wanted a clean uh, record. A good yeah, yeah, she record. Actually record. Of course, he wanted that. But uh, like I said, the football is a is a team sport, and the others. Yeah. If if it wasn't like in the training, you can tell by players if they if they are not motivated, if they are just okay with being bench or they don't show intentions to be at uh, being a starter, even though there's uh, many many very crafty veterans uh, ahead of them in in the quality of the game. But the team, the let's say the players, twelve to eighteen in the squad they were very hungry very eager to take the next step to uh, as you see with Josh Tutosme for example he he is a not a regular starter usually but then as Villanueva got injured ahead of the competition and because of his work ethic because of his um, hunger to prove himself he was able to perform very very well in in that season and uh, that's what I and all the coaches expect and in the uh, best case is in the team a winning mentality, uh, uh, a little rivalry between those who covering the positions at the moment, and that's what we had in the team. That's why it was only logical for for us to give them something back. Yeah, and it's yes, unfortunate yes. that it was Kaya in the last game, but it is what it is. What it is. Uh, I'm not apologizing for any decision. Yeah, I think uh, it would be the other way around also, Shraki, if, if in that decision, your team won, yeah? Considering uh, even they started and then they, they were able to hold the, the Kaya team, then I think it's also a positive side also. That will be, it will go back to you. 
the coaching staff, which is you and then Coach Frank, if it goes the other way. It, it's, it's how no. it works. If uh, Coach Frank or Eric or someone was not um, comfortable with, with what we did, is it's no problem for me, you know. You can always put, you can always blame me in the end because I don't care so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, aside from mentioning to Coach Frank that it's it's more of giving time and to give, uh, well, to expose for uh, development with the uh, younger players that you have, even if you really plan to win, let's say you start. You start all your first eleven on first half, and then you and you let's say you scored one two zero, then you put them on the second half, and then there's an issue or problem there because uh, uh, it's their first time to play. Then you lost to three two. Then it's it's much worse because your decision on second half. So I think starting them would be better and would be. Uh, you you have more time to give your decision as a coach. Am I going to pull them oh, out in the for second the half? If, if you might remember, yeah. Kaya barely crossed the the midline anymore when we subbed in. I think we subbed three times in halftime. Yeah, uh, with Yembe Manu and um, mm, it wasn't Mike. Who else went in? Mike. Anyways, was, Mike was already inside. Yeah, Mike was starting. So. We sub three times. I cannot remember who was the third one, but Kaya barely crossed the half line and they were parking the bus with 11 players inside their box. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of luck, we will win this game as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's one thing Shraki uh, mentioned also, no? uh, because we asked him about that and he mentioned that uh, there are the opportunities, you, were, you have chances, even though uh, if you were starting the best 11, easily you, you can beat uh, your opponent. So, Yeah, I felt also we would have... Because everything went very well for us. I'm not saying Kaya is not so good. Kaya is a very good team and I respect the club and the players a lot of what they have. But I feel if it would go down and we need to win against Kaya and we start all the best players, we would have ripped them apart in that season. Oh, Same yeah. as we did with all the teams. Yeah, yeah. Good. Because it's very hard, you know. I remembered, uh, Shraki, I was the inter assigned to uh, make an analysis analysis of uh, your team versus Menjola, and you have six zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, I think we 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 made we made the right decision, and uh, I'm not regretting it, and I'm very happy for all those who could start and try it and. Um, the, they were a little bit shaky in the beginning, the first 20 minutes, because you're not, if you're not starting, if you're not playing for so long, you don't feel the positions, you don't have the confidence maybe uh, in your ability and in your skill set so much. As you saw in the first game, we were struggling a little bit also to find our rhythm, to find our opportunities uh, against the ADT team. But um, for the players sitting on the bench, it was the right decision. We treat our club or our team members as a family and um, if someone is not happy or someone is working hard and trying hard and won't get an opportunity when everything is set and done already then when when should they play yeah so for for them it was a good good experience and a good opportunity to showcase their skills and what if they get new contracts or not it's not in my hands anymore but <laughs> i tried my best but Rocky, during that game, you were already playing and coaching because we, we can see in the videos that while you play, you were telling Bugas, or oh, maybe you were doing like that, no? Telling him. What it's... Yeah, I always. It's, it's, uh, I never felt like coaching, but it's, it's more helping, you know? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, when I'm 34, I have played many games, many big games, and uh, I have a lot of experience. And I'm. Um, um, I'm more on helping. I'm, I'm a helper, not a coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a yaya. A yaya <laughs> in on the uh, All right. Okay. I think uh, it's uh, 8.29. So it's uh, on time for our game. Ah, perfect. Game analysis. So remember this. Uh, 
when we do our game analysis, we follow the five W's. You have to identify who, where, when, why, uh, and what. What's the problem? Is it uh, Shraki, who is uh, very lazy on the on the side? When, where, uh, what? And then one H. How will you solve that problem? So here in football life, Shraki will just uh, be showing you a picture, and then uh, you try to share something. But in real football coaching, we do this one right. I think uh, that during my course in Germany, they really tried to teach us on how to do game analysis with their technology. But here in the Philippines, we're starting because of uh, the camera, the cell phone, the laptop. Nowadays are high tech already. So I think uh, we are already going there. Especially your batch when we did the course, it's the first batch yeah. With uh, that's his, Zoom. That's history Zoom, uh... part. <laughs> that's history it's... partner, huh? History yon. Uh, Shwakid, all of us never experienced conducting a course and doing it online. No? But uh, yeah. we were able to manage. Uh, despite all those challenges, we were able to learn. Uh, did you Even learn? Shraki. Did you learn? Shraki, Shraki? is uh, always standing because uh, he's not used to sitting down. <laughs> yeah, I think most of the coaches, <laughs> uh, everyone is uh, not used to sitting down for the whole day, for five uh, days, right? And then, right? Oh, and also, okay, so we we'll show you a picture. If you will answer it right, if you will answer it right, you please uh, mention when. If you can remember the year of that picture, who are those in the picture? Who are your opponent? And if you will give me a wrong answer, you'll get red card again. Huh? Expansion because again, uh, huh? you're one of the favorite players who are being tackled on the game. Huh? Most of the time. <laughs> oh, we'll show time. you a picture. Then... <laughs> oh, you remember uh, this? Um, it must be either end of November or December 2011. Cup quarterfinal against Nuremberg. Did you win? FA Cup quarterfinal Did 2011. You Did you win this game? Did you win the game? We won the game away, which is this is one of oh. this is the oldest uh, derby in Germany. Wow! My club against Nuremberg. Yeah. Wow! Nice. We won. Wow! I what, remember that. What position yes. do you play there, Shaki? This this game, I think I played left wing. Okay. Mm. I get. Uh, I have played every position in that season. Six, eight, ten, striker, right, left back, left wing. But wow. in that game, I played left wing. Wow. Good. Okay. Next. I told you, you're the favorite. Someone's <laughs> tackling you already. <laughs> uh, oh. That's when Timor was this? You remember? C games. C games against Timor Leste. I think we, we needed one more goal. Oh yes. Sorry to make it in the semi-finals, but we failed unfortunately. But still it was a good show. Yes. Yeah, we were on the other side. We were there on the uh, Rizal. Ah yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. We were analyzing. Nice shoes. Wow. <laughs> This one, another tackle. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Suzuki Cup in Bacolod against Singapore. We won 1-0 for the oh. goal of Kiki. You remember it well, huh? Very yeah, good. Yeah. Very sharp, huh? Very good sharp. memory. But to, with your family, let's try, huh? If you... <laughs> uh, this one. Um... The picture is from. Um, <laughs> uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot how the thing is called. That, that was in time zone. In time zone. Now I remember. We we went time zone, and uh, my wife and the little one picked me and Diaz up. So 
I decided let's have a picture real quick on the on the machine. Uh, is it in Glorieta? Is it in, <laughs> is it in Glorieta? No, no, no. It's High Street. It's High Street. Ah, oh, okay. Time Zone High Street. All right. Oh, cute. Promoting huh? cute. Promoting <laughs> Yeah, we should have a oh, sponsor for maybe, that. Maybe they can uh, no, give away here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this one. There, Mr. Uh, Football. Um, that was in Vietnam for the AFF awarding. And uh, best 11, I made it. Wow. First Filipino. First Filipino? Ever. Yes, yes, first Filipino. Huh? Nice. We're making history. Thank you, Sharaki. I look good, uh, even in a suit. Yes. yes. So, so <laughs> can you see yourself being a PFF president in the future? I told I told Boss Nonong I will take over once he's done with his term. <laughs> yeah. You will jump. Huh? Never mind coaching. Uh, you, you will were... jump to becoming a president. <laughs> okay, Sharaki, since you mentioned about that, if... Example, example, five years from now, and then you will be, maybe it happened that uh, later on, maybe we will have a, a wish, and then you, that you wish that you would be granted to be the president of Philippine Football Federation. What would be the one in your mind? Because you, you experienced already the challenges. What's the first move that of, you would want to change? Yeah, there's a challenges in Philippine football. So what are your uh, steps or... The, <laughs> well, uh, I don't claim to know it all. That's that's for certain. I I'm I'm a good player. I'm a very good player. But I'm like I said in the coaching course, I have a lot to learn, and I have uh, still a lot to get to know in the within the Philippines how the system runs, how everything is set up, and uh, obviously there is things room of improvement. I feel that football is not not yet for the critical mass or for the for the masses you know because in germany it's like in every other world football is the sport for the poor it is for those who cannot afford for those who who dream bigger who wants to reach uh or to want to break the break the life they have right now it was for me like that football was my outlet my uh, I forget all the problems and eventually I will make it there and have a good life with the salary with the fame with everything that comes with football with the sponsorships and all of that and um, here in the Philippines I feel like it's more for the rich at the moment you know you have to pay yeah. for the academy like I give you a sample my sons I told you I forced them to join an academy it was I think for both of them it was 10k a month in Germany, you pay 8K for a yearly appearance in, a, in an academy. Is that impressive? A year. Not... Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe even less. This is just a membership that you join there. You don't have to buy the jerseys. You don't have to buy the tracksuit. You get everything in that, in that 120 euro it is or 100 euro it is a year. And now it's, I think it's even cheaper. So for the masses, for the poor, for middle class. Football is for the middle class and the poor. And that's why they have so much hunger. They have so much eagerness to to be the breadwinner for their families, to provide them with yeah. money, with money. A lot of problems you can solve with money, unfortunately. And, and that's why everybody wants to go their pathway. But where is the outlet in the Philippines? First, how much money can you make really in the league? And second is, how why you pay why you have to pay so much to join an academy or to do this to do that it's yeah. it's a different setup and that i would like to change if there is funds and there is people who wants to help and are willing to invest in the sport then eventually it will change and it will come that we have what we have right now coach ours is two million grassroots kids it can be 15 easily 15 yes, and 12 yes. somewhere there and then once football become it will overtake basketball and all the other sports boxing and eventually but first we have to change that setup that you have to pay for football education or just for fun or for everything else and then we we will open the gate for philippine football players to maybe 
go also overseas. Go not. I'm not talking about Singapore or going Thailand, Malaysia. I'm talking about playing in Europe, playing in in uh, the top five leagues maybe in Europe because we have everything. I think God gave us everything to be great football players. Yeah. Uh, the height, the agility, the mindset, the joy. That's all what we Filipinos have and. I think once we change, make it open for everyone. Uh, I just to give you a sample, like around the corner here in my house, there's like five cages and my town is really a small town. Five cages where the public can play football. Like what you see in the Philippines with the bat- basketball thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's yeah, for everyone. Basketball. That's why people go outside and chose to play. Go And then you're literally 24 hours, you will be bombarded with football in the news, with the TV, with everything once we take slowly steps in that direction. I think Philippines can join a World Cup easily, an Asian Cup. It's not an historical event anymore if the Philippines join the Asian Cup. It will be an historical event if the Philippines don't join the Asian Cup yeah. or not winning the Suzuki Cup. Mm-hmm. Shraki, what's your say on using futsal as, a, as, as an entry point for Uh, yeah. football development because we have lots of basketball courts and cemented areas already yeah. that's how you that's how you start the small sided technical games 5v5 4v4 when you have uh, here outside as well it's not never it's a pitch you play never as a kid on an 11v11 pitch you always go on the futsal, futsal uh, court yeah. and that's when you start a street technique uh, beating your yeah. opponents you start yes. enjoying the game learning the rules being trying to be better than the other one and uh, when they have futsal in the Philippines a lot of Dutch players um, um, played with three Dutch guys from the national team in, in the Bundesliga together they're all from futsal they can do things with the ball you've never seen and <laughs> seen before and they all started playing futsal on the street and that's how we that's how we can bring the game to the next level at the Philippines yes. we have so much I see so many players they have unbelievable abilities and uh, they just don't the decision making or something is different to someone who grew up watching yeah. daily football. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Actually that's the running situation that we have right now Shaki, no? Because uh, the <laughs> advertisement or the challenges that we have to compete against basketball is really very evident. But eventually in the future No, we, we are uh, one wishing for that. No? That the yeah. football will be known. Okay, next picture. Uh, oh. So 20, Mr. Football. How I'm many? Very, I'm very, very proud to get that. Yes, Mr. Football. How huh? many already, Shraki? How many already, Mr. Two. Football? Two. Two? Okay, Two. I, oh. we, we have to challenge you because uh, we, we guested uh, Edwin... Uh, Elmer Bidia. Elmer Bidia. Elmer Bidia. How many? He has three. So he was asking me if is there a Filipino or another one that can beat? with this uh, connection oh he's back already yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm back oh, mike you did not hear huh oh, Shaki you... said he will go for five times mr football wow <laughs> yeah Amazing, that's for huh? sure <laughs> yeah I'm, you have... uh, literally i'm i'm not kidding <laughs> i want to go down as the best ever and i uh, if i have yes. to win more psa awards then i i don't do it yeah Just stay, stay focused, and uh, well, with with how you you do your 
uh, thinking and how you really appreciate football, your work ethics. I think you will really achieve that. Next. Oh, this one. I like this. Wow. What a model. See, model, not acting, model. <laughs> Modeling, huh? <laughs> Uh, that was summer, you, right? Do you skateboard? No, actually not. I just picked it up because my son left it around the corner. <laughs> it's just for modeling. Uh, like it's, just it's, for, it's just for modeling. Yeah, just for modeling. Yeah. And uh, you could, I cannot, I cannot do nothing about I, only football. I'm just good at football. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I will yeah, tell, and modeling, I will, huh? Shaki, I will tell that to uh, Elmer Bedia that you will break his record. I will break his record. <laughs> If I have to play the last season yeah. for free to get the award, I will do. I will <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, just to break the record. <laughs> yes, so that's the motivation, huh? Because he has three. He already have one, two already. My yes, goodness. and this one historical moment for the country. Yeah. yeah, that was the first game in Asian Cup when we faced uh, South Korea. Uh, very proud moment. I was very honored to wear the captain armband. Uh, enlighten us and share what happened so that we can learn oh. from it and then maybe the other players can you know will try to avoid such uh, honestly I do not know what happened maybe you can uh... Uh, oh we need a, we need another 90 minutes for that <laughs> uh, maybe oh uh, let's say one word is it uh, pride is it uh, Uh, mm. Conflict of no. ideas, or is no, it because it, you're from it was, Germany? Okay. It's uh, <laughs> was a lot of things that came together. It was not the right time, not the right, um, the, was not the right respect of both of us parties at at the the time when Coach Dooley was um, taking care of the Asphalt and. Uh, I still wish him well and hope that he's um, fine with whatever he's doing at the moment. But history has proven that he was wrong in what he has done. And that's all I have to say. I wish him well. And uh, I'm not angry or I'm not holding anything uh, in me, within me, for not inviting me or not selecting me for the Oscars anymore. It is what it is. Yeah. But uh, Shaki, I'm no, uh, the past. yeah. But uh, we were also pondering about that uh, situation that uh, you were not in the lineup or you, you're not selected. But uh, um, did anybody like talk to you about uh, fixing things like uh, in that kind of situation that you were happening uh, with the national team that you are not included? Mm. No, not really. It was, uh, like I said, it was uh, the coach's decision to not invite me for several camps anymore. And uh, I felt like if if I'm not being appreciated uh, in the team anymore or representing the country, if someone feels like I'm not good enough or not a good person to join the national team, then uh, I don't offer my services any longer because I know uh, that I can... As a person and as a player, I can bring a lot to any team. And if it's if someone thinks different, then that's his opinion, and I don't have to share it. Mm, what's that's pretty the, much it. No. What's the lesson, if I may ask you? What was the lesson? You might there? ask Coach Dooley of his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, there is not a lesson to learn. It was. Um, it was a situation where where both of us uh, did not get very 
did not find a, a middle way or a compromise to fix things. And uh, that's normal. That's a normal occasion in, in life that sometimes you, you want to go left, the other person wants to go right, or one person calls it gray and you call it silver. It's, uh, it is what it is. And um, uh, it's just, uh, just sayang as we say that it was a long two years, but like I said, I'm the present and he is the past. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. Huh? Because you will be the <laughs> next one. Yeah. I'll be the next one and I won't do the mistakes he did. Yes, yes. That's a that's, uh, good, good thinking. Huh? Can you share also uh, with this picture? Huh? You kick oh. him in the butt? <laughs> uh, uh, what's I the... for prey. <laughs> what can you remember? <laughs> I remember, oh, yeah. It was yeah. like second half. Uh, he had a bad touch and I was a little bit late. But there was no foul. Oh. He can still play and walk. He's still fine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about the, the person there watching? Uh, how what our manager uh, yes. what can you say our about coach. the manager the for a very short time because of maybe he, he needs to be there because of the appearance of a coach the credentials of a coach um he was a great coach well a great person very very great person very humble a gentleman from head to toe and uh, was great working with him um he had not enough time to really get to know us and to really uh, prepare us for the biggest tournament in Philippines history, but uh, was I was very grateful to to learn from him and to see his views and his points and his uh, ideas of football. And great having a name like him, a big manager um, in in the country and uh, in and around the national team, it was really great. Yes. 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 Because, oh, this uh, one. Yeah, next picture. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's in in uh, Italy. We we decided to after the lockdown was pretty much done in Germany to to go on a vacation to see something else, get to the beach, and uh, went with friends. Um, the guy on the right next to me is a former Eintracht Frankfurt player. He played there, oh. I think, twelve years. Um, very, very good player, very crafty one. And his wife, his sister, and one of our friends from the biggest newspaper in Germany is on the right in the white bikini. She's, she's also a former professional and a football player. She played in Italy Ooh, in the Serie A wow. for the women's team. Um, she, you, you wouldn't believe what she can do with the ball. It's really unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we choose not to play two touch with her at the beach because she will embarrass us all. <laughs> oh. oh, Mike, any comment? Never I, mind. I like all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you're talking about uh, talent. controlling the ball, huh? Yeah, that's talent, huh? <laughs> yeah. You want to... <laughs> Maybe my wife need, needed to make 10 shots to get it proper. Or <laughs> <laughs> went left and right. Now it's... Um, <laughs> no, football is a big part. It's the biggest part in my life. I take it everywhere. Even yeah. in, in vacations. Can't stop. Yeah, we were planning to have uh, the same photo with Coach Mike, but uh, we cannot find the uh, beach now. <laughs> Or a oh. pool for us to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to do the abs abs workout. Abs workout. It's a nice one. Oh, I do that one. Nice right picture, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one. Uh, that was my goal against uh, Nicosia in the Europa League. Wow. I remember that very well. Um. Just recently, there is a video of mine in, in uh, I think.
receive uh, a high salary, you can see a bright future. Uh, how come you decided to come to the Philippines? Uh, what made you uh, give or uh, what made you decide to come home for your mom? Is it for your mom? Is it uh, yeah? Is it something that I, you want to prove? I saw yeah. I saw when I went always with the national team on home games in the Philippines. Uh, I felt. There is so much potential. There is so much, so much uh, not used talent in the Philippines. So much love I felt from the fans and from my family and from my mom, especially. I owe her very, very much. Um, she, she made so hell and earth. She moved to for me to make me a football player or to let me chase my dreams, uh, even though the outcome was very unsure in Germany and. And I felt it this time to pack my things up and, and uh, bring the game in the Philippines to the next level with the teammates, with Ceres back then, um, with, um, with an owner who is willing to burn, uh, literally burn so much money just, just to bring the club football on a level where we will get respect in, in the AFC. And he did it well and we did all our part. And um, being part of something that that is in the making is is a uh, it's the best feeling. You see the results. You work hard. You have fallbacks. You you have to pick yourself up together again. And uh, um, I think we're on the right way. Well, regards to the league, in regards of the Oscars and uh, also the grassroots, we just need to tip that little extra inch to make it as big as I mentioned, uh, like in Europe, and then we achieved our goal. And I like, I love the Philippines. I love the life there. I love my heritage and I'm very proud of that. And um, even though I grew up in Germany, I grew up only with my mom, with my tita. So I have a lot of Filipino values in me and uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate them and I respect the country and, and my brothers and sisters in the Philippines a lot. Uh, wow. You mentioned Shaki, no, about the, your, your previous man, uh, manager or your boss in Ceres burns his money and then suddenly in the maybe the last part of the uh, in the mid I think mid year or like after three months after the pandemic uh, the club folded or yeah folded and well, then they yeah. uh, uh, sell the club to uh, this new owner so what what was running into your mind during that time um I, I, of course, everyone was disappointed about um, how, how suddenly the, the fault of, of the owner came, but uh, we have to understand. And we, me and Martin and some other, Carly, the Morga and everyone was close with him. And uh, we would understand that the company issue, the, the family issue around the company and uh, the pandemic all together was very hard to handle for him, uh, financial wise and also emotional wise. And um, we we wish him well. We are very very still up to now very grateful for what he's done and what he had, what he achieved with us and for us for for the Philippine football. And um, we know we don't look back and say, ah, oh, this in this moment made all the five years or six years disappear I had in Sarah's. It, it's not like that. Um, we're grateful that we have a new owner and we are grateful that he gave the opportunity to someone else to take over, that he admitted um, it's hard at times for him to handle and to take care of his responsibilities for the players and the club members. And he was man enough to admit it and uh, gave the opportunity to someone else. That's, uh, you have to see it like that. He's a honored man and a great personality to make a decision like that is very hard and he swallowed his pride and gave way for for someone else. Yes. Yes. Okay. How about uh, this one? You look like uh, sixteen or <laughs> eighteen years old. Yeah, I must be in my eighteen. You know, it's a funny story. Um, 
uh, I I played for the club in third. In Wow. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? Um that's Dubai 2000 something. 15 16 15 or 16 we we are very close to the family like i mentioned uh, earlier to the guy from uh, frankfurt yeah. he's frankfurt, now yeah. placed in berlin very loving family he has and a very um we have a lot in common and i think we will new year's eve we will have another celebration together yeah <laughs> online is it the virtual celebration or You'll be, uh, think, oh, you're in Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one household is allowed to. to oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here so again, we'll lockdown. Maybe in the Christmas, an another lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, from I think on the, on the 23rd, I don't know if it's already imp will be implemented. On the 23rd up to, I think, January 3, like that. Well, anyway, yeah. Filipinos are creative and uh, innovative. <laughs> <laughs> they will find ways. They yeah, will find ways. There's always yes. a loophole. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, this one. Um, um, uh, I don't know. But um, Sadef, I think Sadef told me, Pacquiao is requesting uh, the jersey number 17, which I wear at the at the Ascots and uh, what can I say? If, if the biggest sportsman in Philippines history is requesting your jersey number, you're more than proud uh, that he recognizes you. And um, yes, I have some gloves at home here in Germany from from signed from Pacquiao. Uh, he's a he's a very humble guy, and uh, the biggest the biggest thing that happened in sports for for the Philippines and all over the world. And we were very proud that we. Uh, can raise the flag together. Maybe yes, as a yes. president, he will be. Well, while I run the PFF, he will run the country, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Money. You know, I remember walking around Koblenz there in Germany when they asked me, from what country are you? I say, Philippines. What? What Philippines? When I say, you know Pacquiao? Mani Pacquiao? Ah, okay. I know, I know. So they will remember. <laughs> they will know the answer. Oh, the last. So this is the first. First. Uh, well, it's not the first, but the start of uh, history. Because before, we don't have a pitch. We don't have a standard football field. But this team... Uh, Won the won the game and I think uh, how come how, how did Shraki got invited to join the Ascals? Have you have you learned about this uh, Ascal team when you were in Germany? Did someone email you or your mom inform you? I actually did not know that there's a football national team in in the Philippines so, and. Uh, Back then, I just had my German passport. Um, my mom, my mom never asked for a Filipino passport for me when I was born. So there was this rule: uh, I think you have to decide for which country you want to play uh, before you turn 21. And when the federation reached out for me, uh, I wasn't able to, yeah, to redo this decision because I got never asked. And eventually, FIFA dropped that rule. So you could decide for um, for your mother's country or dad's country to play, even though you're above 21. So I um, asked my mom if it's possible to get 
to for me to still get a Filipino passport. And my mother was still Filipina when I was born. Yeah. So I was basically a, what's it called? Passive um, citizen of the Philippines. So I just had to activate my passport. And then from there on, I joined the national team. Wow. That's history. So very thankful. Huh? We Part are two. very grateful with Shraki yeah. deciding to join the Philippine team. Okay, the last last game. Can we ask Shraki uh, who is the coaching eye so that we can know who will win the Decathlon uh, discount? So again, we will the give game another is, clue. Uh, the coaching eye. So for me, he played for the World Cup representing England. Uh, I think similar with you, he's uh, into fashion. Beckham. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> David Beckham. Correct. Oh, How about Mike? <laughs> oh, okay, my turn is uh, playing in Spain and won the World Cup for Spain and now still playing uh, but recently got injured uh, playing now in uh, Asia uh, Iniesta yeah wow. Iniesta. all right yeah. you you really know your look alike huh? <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's check huh? So, I hope uh, everybody will agree with the, our the coaching eye. Now, now, uh, Shraki, now you have to decide. You have to decide because it's a tie. Because we are playing. Yeah, uh, it's a tie. I, I am leading. Uh, oh, it's a tie already. Four. It's 5 on no. partner. It's 5 so, on. I won last I, time. So we have to ask Rocky, which one would you prefer, Beckham or Iniesta? You know the answer. Playing wise, playing wise, I would go with Iniesta, but uh, look alike. Look, the look is Beckham, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but he chose the <laughs> skills of Iniesta, so it's a tie. No, we are I... talking about look alike. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, so I know okay. you are, I don't know, maybe you have something to do. We're very sorry because we no. extended when we are talking with the national team, team captain and the future. You will be making history. It's future really coach. Uh, a privilege. Yes, we're very sorry to really uh, get to ask more questions. Well, anyway. Partner, we're uh, having a hard time. Thank you uh. very much. We're having a hard time uh, yeah. with uh, Shraki. Can you see red, red from my Especially nose? Especially if we are in the course also. Shraki is always uh, listening to us. <laughs> yes. I'm a good anyway, student. I'm curious because some of the Germans are having difficulty speaking in English. How come you're very good? You're very fluent. I just came. It just came when I moved to the Philippines. Oh really? Oh, I mean, okay, okay. English wow. really not not uh, you get you have Eng English lessons in school, but it will bring you nowhere. So learning by doing better. Oh, uh, but uh, this one also shock, you know. I mean, uh, because uh, you went into the coaching side already. This is the last thing that I will ask this. Uh, what comes into your mind when you were? You have to take the lowest uh, license. And, and then uh, you are on the highest level already, and then you wanted to take the C, but it's it's a requirement. Mike, that's humility. Why do you have to uh, ask that? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, I just, um, for me, it's not a problem to start at the lowest. Yeah. I just heard of like in Germany uh, once I asked for a coaching course already, and they said once you're six years playing as a pro or you're a national team player, you can over jump the lowest and just start with. Um, the second lowest, which is uh, the B also in Germany. So I I thought the rule counts also in the Philippines, but 
uh, since I found out it's not the case, it was no problem for me to to take the C. I want I don't want to get a special treatment or something. I just want to do it like everyone else does. And and it turned out that it's very helpful. I learned a lot of things yes. in the C course already, and I'm very grateful that I was able to listen to all of you and to to get uh, input from other coaches or to listen to their stories, to their setups. Part no, actually, part Shraki, there, that's one thing that's no, why we are asking Shraki. Because no, actually, he, we changed the rules because we wanted Shraki to undergo C. <laughs> No, it's no, Shraki, only now that we change the rule. No, 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 no. <laughs> Partner, actually, Shraki was sharing that one because I really asked that because uh, there are some coaches who is not giving importance to the licensing. So that's why one of the best players in our country right now is taking the C license, considering of his uh, um, experience and uh, knowledge, and he's still humble enough to take the C because. He felt that yes. it's, it's needed, and he will he will learn a lot of things. I, he, he mentioned okay. already. So Shraki, sorry for the extension, but here in our show, we are always giving one wish to our guests. So I think when when we made you the federation president, you already gave us mentioned a solution. You mentioned but this time you. You being Shraki now, what is your wish? It's up to you for football, family, or maybe other other wish that you would want to share. What's your wish? You know, I I don't wish really for something. I I always work for something, and um, it's uh, I'm I'm having everything. You know, I'm very grateful for what I have and that keeps my mind away from wanting so much. You know, it's always you get teach in society and in football to always want, to want, to want and to wish and to, but uh, I rather choose to see what I have and my life is full. My uh, kids are healthy. My wife is healthy. My mom is healthy. My sister and her son are healthy. Um, I have everything. There's nothing to wish for. I work for everything. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. So this is the last question we always ask our uh, guest. Guest. Uh, for you. That's the reason why we cannot stop because you're very smart. Your answers are really enticing, and we want more. <laughs> we want to learn more, listen more. So forgive us for. Uh, asking too much questions. But this is the last question, Shraki. <laughs> uh, for sure, what is football for you? Football is my life. Wow. Football is yeah. my life. It's right. the best thing I ever met and the, the most sustainable uh, part in my in my life, in my young life. And I'm very grateful for for every training, for every lesson, for all that football gave me. I have literally everything what you see in, in that video, everything I eat, everything I have, I earn to football. The person I am, I owe to football. And it's the best sport in the world. So once the Philippines fell in love with it, we will overrule everyone. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, one of our wishes here also, Shraki, in football life. No? Uh, actually, my partner here, when I interviewed him, that's part of his wish that uh, football will be known in this country. So everything will follow, you know? That's true. Yeah. So again, uh, in behalf of, uh, of Football Life here, me and my partner, Coach Aris, we want to thank you, Shraki, for uh, having this time with us to share with our uh, family in the Philippines, the life of football, and... Uh, the experience, the knowledge, and the challenges that you've gone through you know, being in the Germany and then moving into our uh, native country, which is the Philippines. So again, thank you very much for uh, sharing with us your uh, time. Okay, so hopefully we'll have this another one next year. So which, were, which <laughs> club you're moving into? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be staying. He'll be staying in the Philippines. 
So we'll give you final shout out if you want to greet uh, someone, anyone or yeah. Uh, yeah. No one in particular, everyone. I wish everyone a safe and healthy and peaceful Christmas and uh, a very happy new year if ever we don't see and hear each other from uh, from Germany. And um, very grateful for you guys to have me on the show and on the coaching course and uh, enjoy everything and enjoy the time uh, with the family. This is priceless. And even though sometimes it's tough, you there's always a positive note on everything. So thank you for having me on the show and uh, enjoy the holidays. Yeah, thank you very yes. much, Shraki. Thank and you, Shraki. And enjoy you your Christmas also there in Germany. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you, Shraki, and uh, mabuhay ka. God bless. God bless. God bless. Bye -bye. Regards to your cute kids, huh? Well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Take care, yeah, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Shout out to all the viewers. See you next. See you, Mike. You next. Clarinio Brothers.